Tony, it's a great pleasure having you here for the interview about being human with algorithms. And uh, of course, you are very well known for every computer scientist. And if someone in the audience doesn't know Tony Oar, look it up. Um, <laughs> he's a big one. So um, maybe briefly present yourself for those of you knowing you and those of you maybe not yet knowing you. I'm perhaps rather unusual in, in that I have no, no qualification in computing science and no qualification in mathematics. Since I was 14 years old, was the last examination I took in mathematics. Mm -hmm. But um, uh, my primary degree is in philosophy. So um, they always tell me that philosophy was a good preparation for any career, and it certainly has been in my case. I, I still love philosophy, and I think I've been practicing it and, um, and teaching it and discovering yeah. uh, things, um, ideas, uh, that philosophical ideas underlie so much of our, my understanding of what, of what uh, computers are as intellectual tools. Yeah. And also the, the doctor of philosophy is the only true doctor, is what one always says. I don't have a doctorate of philosophy. Yeah, I, but still I, it's like showing that the discipline is, is the true human discipline to yes, go for. I think so. Um, so. So the title of the interview is Being Human with Algorithms, and the, the goal of the series is to look at the effects of the digital transformation and uh, what are the most apparent effects for you when you think about today and digital transformation? What are the most apparent effects of this digital transformation for you? Oh, we see them all around us. Yeah. Um, uh, I think they're m more familiar than I, 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 I need to uh, uh, e even list them. I, I am amazed yeah. uh, that even since the year 2000, which I thought was an immensely advanced technological state, um, every few years something comes up that completely um, changes uh, yeah. the way some matter is approached or enjoyed. Um, Every um, every few months, my, my my computer software gets improved, gets more usable. Mm. Um, it, it's wonderful to be amazed so often. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and uh, how would you say do you shape this digital transformation? Well, I like to concentrate um, because I think it's often neglected uh, the way that um, scientific and technological discoveries have. Um, had their influence on the way that human beings think about themselves mm -hmm. um, and the world around them. I think the uh, revolutions that were initiated, for example, by Newton, the idea that the fu future could be predicted by mathematical calculation mm. is now completely part of our culture. We, we just know, take that for granted. It was new in his day. Um, go, of course, being a, being a philosopher, I've studied also ancient ancient philosophy, so I can look at uh, the um, ideas, the, the really seminal ideas in, in in human history that have been originated by um, philosophers such as Euclid, and really a geometer, a mathematician, and Euclid, sorry, um, um, Aristotle. Mm -hmm. um, whose logic is, is uh, his method of doing logic is still in use today um, on computers of course um, from from then on one, one could follow the same sort of ideas and offer honor, honorary positions in, in the history of computer science um, to such philosophers as William of Ockham um, Gottlieb Leib Leibniz um, uh, Bertrand Russell um, and of course Alan Turing who was also interested in yeah. philosophy and uh, you already uh, went a little bit into the direction also of the pace of the developments that we have and I would say that or at least I perceive it like that that the changes are coming faster and faster like you said your software is updating each month and yes. so five years ago it was maybe updating less frequently indeed and uh, do you see this as a uh, as a 
from a ph philosophical point of view, do you see it like as a as a challenge for humankind the, having this speed, or is it uh, something where you would say, okay, in earlier times we also had it, but it was just not in this technical field, but uh, it was also fastly changing the life of the people? Oh, <coughs> I think the the um, uh, changes in our um, social and, and uh, well, social activity, le writing letters, um, uh, right, contributing to WhatsApp, emails, all these things are completely new um, and they have come at a rate which is quite unprecedented. Um, in, 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 until um, this century and the end of the last century, uh, people really expected to, to, to live their lives in the same environment that they were born in. Hmm. Isn't that ridiculous? Yeah, <laughs> it's, 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 it's very, it's it's very interesting to see it when you see it from a day-to-day -day perspective, and also the. Well, let, let's maybe come to the internet, which which I see as a key key, key factor for key this factor. digitalization, digital transformation, and also staying with the people, having connections all over the planet. So uh, and the World Wide Web, which made it yeah. uh, really productive for, yeah. for the human race. Which made it productive, and, yes. and now having something um, also like Facebook and uh, fake news filter bubbles. Oh, yes, yes. Any, any thoughts to that? Is well, it I, I think the, the, the changes are far faster than, than we, our political systems can really cope with. Um, I mean, a particular example is is the um, pr uh, privacy regulations, mm -hmm. uh, which force every company uh, to contact me individually f um, and get my agreement that they should be allowed to hold some of my data. The paper they have to read five or ten pages of of, of stuff. Am not you doing that? I am not doing that. And no they, one they is doing it. And nobody yeah. is doing. It easy political solution is, is to have a few I mean maybe if, if the profession had thought of this in advance uh, they would have been prepared and to to um, uh, produce um, uh, a standard um, agreements on privacy which the company would only say we we guarantee privacy up to level three say or 3a or whatever it is so that you 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 can judge by the, s the sort of um, privacy levels that you're interested in by reading quite a lot, mm. but then you don't have to read anything else. I'm, I'm, I'm a 3A person, and but fly, that, 5B. And that, but there's always, so to me always the difficulty is that the, in the complexity. So there's many complex contracts in this case that yes. you have to take and complex systems that you have to interact with. So would you say the world is also getting more complicated through the digital transformation? Well, I think it is, and the, co the complexity is, is, is in this particular example of the privacy uh, being transmitted to the general public. Mm -hmm. um, I don't object to complexity that's hidden behind the um, computer doors. Um, that doesn't obtrude, and, and the I know that a lot of that technology is there in order to give me more convenient and easier and more comprehensible access to the facilities being provided. Hmm. So I don't mind complexity in itself in its place, hmm. which is where I don't see it. Mm -hmm. And uh, switching a little bit to big data, so there to me it's what I often tell people is Big data we have now for some years, so companies mm -hmm. are collecting because it's not costly. And now having artificial intelligence, we have a powerful tool that enables the mining of this data, so taking uh, conclusions out of the data. And so this is where, for me, it becomes uh, dangerous. So And also very important to act now as a society and to start thinking about, okay, what do we allow, who should get which data and should be allowed to do what with this data? Um, but what is your standpoint on that? Well, these so same problems have been uh, an integral part of um, enterprise data processing uh, well back in, in the last century. Um, so uh, one could see publications about um, 
consistency of databases, checking consistency, merging of databases, access, pattern matching in databases. Um, not quite as long as I can remember, but mm. it, it's uh, the ideas are the same. What's different, of course, is urgency and scale. We need the, we, the uh, um, implementation of the solutions is much more difficult um, and it's much more urgent to do. So we'll, we'll be in time almost, one might say. Hmm. Um, it's, uh, uh, oh well. <laughs> and also what is also striking me there is that the, the data that is processed is becoming more and more privacy relevant data because when you think about Facebook where people put in their entire lives and then think it further to like the IoT where then sensors are measuring all the time because it's yes. their integral purpose measuring you all the time and then you have all this very personal information and so this I think is a big big change to what we had before. The information has been there but it hadn't been, hasn't been linked together, it mm -hmm. hasn't been linked to me. Mm. It wasn't the sort of data linkage that really enables the exploitation um, and perhaps malevolent expl mm. ex exploitation of this data. Um, and um, a lot of the technologies that have popped up to serve perfectly legitimate and, and serious mm. needs are now exploited by malware and, and bit chain hackers and, and um, uh, by even now by politicians, I'm afraid, and that's uh, yeah, or op opinion manipulators. Opi exactly, yeah. Yeah. Um, and uh, it's I know. I, a lot of people in my country believe that we should have another um, um, referendum mm -hmm. in which we can hopefully reject um, leaving the European mm -hmm. Union. Yeah. But there is no more protection now um, against attack by uh, foreign countries even, yeah. not just individual parties, yeah. um, which will tip the, tip the balance of the vote. Anyway, I'm in part of it. There are also failings, like, like, like the campaign is driven by hate and not by mm. respect, and that, that's, that's new. Um, and whether, whether it's, I think possibly the, 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 um, the social media have contributed to that, mm. but hate has always been with us. Um, xenophobia, a, a hatred of foreigners, hate, a hatred of the other, it has always been there, but now it just seems to be getting more prevalent. And, and also like better organized because the tools so to me it's the tools allow um, hopefully minorities that are extreme to organize better because they can get into contact with that with each other and also the thing you said like foreign whatever uh, like uh, countries or intelligences to to start changes from the from the base like not from the head to the to the uh, to the bottom, but the other way around. So influencing the mass movement, the voters, and yes. then yeah, and then indeed, yeah. yeah. And so, right. what what would you say is the biggest challenge of this digital transformation that we have today? Uh, I couldn't say, but I think a very big one is the, is the influence on politics. Mm -hmm. um, this is not too new, um, but when the politicians who learnt to master the radio. Um, uh, also mis misused it. I mean, mm. Hitler was no. a very one of the first to really no. uh, make the radio his medium of communication no. with the masses. And with Goebbels, he also had a mastermind really uh, uh, driving that to a to at that point in time a very perfect utility for their for their uses for their purposes. Yeah. Yes, yes. Um, so uh, uh, we're now facing a challenge. Of, of a similar nature mm -hmm. that the um, uh, seems to be the right wing have, are exploiting the, yeah. the, the technology to push an agenda which many people regard as highly repugnant. Mm -hmm. yeah, and this is especially also in Germany at the moment a big problem that they, a lot of people are responding to that because some really inner needs seem to be met by the offerings there. Well, that's another thing. The, the, and of course, the in privacy information they have about us individually um, 
can be tuned to, to, to convey the mess, mess, the right message to, con to cause you to vote yeah. in this way yeah. and a different message from the same party, yeah. a con contradictory one, can be sent to somebody else yeah. and we have no control of that. And uh, interestingly, I don't know if you're aware of that, so the, the ultra right wing party, what they managed to do is they stole some votes from, the, or like they acquired some votes from the people from other parties, but they especially managed to uh, motivate people who were non-voters in Germany to vote. So, yes. so they, they managed to mobilize these people also to vote, which I consider a good thing that yes, those people are voting, um, but they had like the wrong incentives and, and yeah, mm -hmm. okay. Um, as we were talking about politicians, so um, in Germany, I have the impression that slowly people are coming to power in politics that are more towards digital technology users. Because Angela Merkel, she she has like a smartphone, but she seems not really to use it. And now is the first time when younger politicians come that also use the internet more natively. Um, do you also see this uh, this kind of gap between the generations that the, the ones that were on the power so far and the younger people use like totally different media to communicate and have a some kind of different life because the younger ones have an online life that is yep. a significant part of their lives and the other ones don't. Yeah, indeed, I've I've seen it in my own family. Yeah. Um, My uh, son's wife has just recently become a, a, a Labour councillor, yeah. uh, having won an election rather unexpectedly yeah. um, uh, in the last round of local elections yeah. earlier this year. So, um, um, and, and she has children, and, and they are different from her too. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. so okay, okay. it is. But But I d yeah, I don't think that's that's harmful. And children have always um, uh, re attempted to accentuate, yeah. their, accentuate their differences from their from their parents' generation. Yeah, that, that's and right. Uh, But in the, in, the, in this case, mm -hmm. I think it's the the different notion is a little bit that the that is um, it's a fundamentally different style of living, I would say, because before, I mean, it was like they were listening to rock music or to other music, and so it was more like a notion of how you change your life to differentiate from your parents, and when, like, spending all your spare time in front of the smartphone, for instance, it's totally different from, from like, going outside and playing around or something like that. Yes, um, but if you take a ten, ten year time scale, yeah. the, the The things will probably settle down and, and yeah. people will move out of uh, that phase and pe people will wonder what, what, a, what, what all this Facebook there. problem yeah. was. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. These, okay. uh, the, yeah. Fa the fashions change so quickly yeah. in this uh, world and um, uh, I mean, that's, that's a good thing. I mean, there was a time... Yeah. Not so long ago, we were all worried about the terrorists exploiting the, yeah. the net, yeah. and that doesn't. That certainly uh, took place at, at one time, but it doesn't seem to be happening very much now. Um, very fortunate. Or, it, or it seems to be not a, not a problem at least. So, are yes. you, you think you are you think towards the the attacks against like critical infrastructures or something yes. like that? Yes, indeed. Yeah. Um, sort of, uh, Uh, mass bombings that uh, yeah. people did were were planned. Yeah. Um, I suspect with the aid. Of, now I think the internet is more used to catch yeah. um, such crimes before that yeah. they really uh, are committed. Oh, okay. This <laughs> is this is also an, an interesting point. If you allow me to get to that, namely um, surveillance in the internet. So yes. And and also like I mean surveillance. Uh, um, is one point, but net neutrality is another another standpoint. So, what would your opinion towards uh, net neutrality be? Neutrality being neutrality being um, that you have the uh, same access conditions to all kinds of services. Meaning, like um, Google can easily offer faster access to its own services because they have a backbone and at the front end. Mm -hmm. But um, telephone companies in Europe started in Portugal, for instance, to say, okay, you get a plan, and in this plan you get only WhatsApp and Facebook and email, and if you want to use other services, you have to pay extra. And so this is then not neutral access to services over the Internet anymore. Yes, I think, I think um, 
I don't know much to say about this. I mean, mm. it, it has happened. I think perhaps even more surprising is is the uh, w willingness of the big and more responsible uh, companies um, to to work together to create a, a level playing field for. Mm. And uh, very largely enforced by European and other regulations. Um, this is this openness of the infrastructure. Microsoft has been fined vast amounts by the yeah. Euro European Union for yeah. uh, just creating an environment in which other people cannot yeah. infiltrate their own. Uh, Google, I suffer from it myself because I have yeah. an Android phone, and yeah. Google is so intrusive. Yeah. Um, it's constantly it's assuming that I want to register for something. Yeah. It's wanting me to talk to his to the, the, the young lady who is going to help me, but yeah. I, I I don't like that. And, yeah. and the trouble is, the manufacturer of the phone is trying the same thing. Yeah. So. Yeah, because data is is valuable to them. It's an asset, so yes, they want yes. to want to have that. So the underlying question to me is like: is is the internet something like a? like a um, a global good that people should have free access to because this is how it started the internet was like an uncontrolled mm. room at the beginning even german legislation mm. that is typically fast in regulating something struggled for many years in regulating like an internet service that i access in the us who's responsible for um, controlling the access or not and uh, so with this net neutrality this is a little bit like shifting towards it's not such a totally free resource anymore and um, so this is why, for me, it's interesting also as a as a general question to say like, should the internet be a totally f um, open resource for all humans so that they can access freely the resources that are available there? Which which is, I think, or was the current state until maybe some years ago, and now because of uh, business interests may shift a little bit. Well, the roads are sort of free to pedestrians, aren't they? Mm. No. But the people who um, use them for more serious transport purposes uh, have to pay. Hmm. Why shouldn't we have the same thing for them? More, no. more like the, if you think of more like roads, something unromantic yeah. like that, yeah. then then that's a good analog. The same yeah. same sort of principles apply. Yeah. I, I think that that's uh, a reasonable because I don't like advertisements. Which yeah. is the way they're paid for at the moment. Yeah. I refuse to enroll yeah. to Sky Television because yeah. they not only take my money, but they yeah. give me advertisements yeah. as well. Yeah. Newspaper advertisements I can ignore, yeah. mostly. They're not moving. Yeah. But moving advertisements are, are I totally terrible. agree to that. Totally agree to yes. that. And what would you say is the, uh, the biggest, or is the biggest chance of the digital transformation? Ah, I don't. <laughs> World peace. <laughs> <laughs> do do you think it will advance? Um, the society? At the moment, I think the, um, uh, the, b the benefits are uh, should be weighed against some of the serious drawbacks mm -hmm. and problems that we've been talking about. If we can master those problems, then one could be more enthusiastic about the mm -hmm. benefits. Mm -hmm. Okay, yeah, it's a, good, it's a good statement. And last question, being human with algorithms was the motto of our symposium, and uh, it's a very broad sentence, so what, what does it mean to you, being human with algorithms in today's world? Yes, I don't use the word algorithms very much, mm -hmm. um, um, but being human in the presence of um, a, a very rigorous discipline which is imposed on on programmers and and, and, and people who who design programs and and, and the uh, people who implement them I, I think that um, sort of mode of modes of rigorous thinking um, that have to be mastered and successfully practiced um, Will contribute contribute something to the uh, development of of the human intellectual culture, mm -hmm. and I, I I welcome that, and that's been fascinating to me all my life. Very good, very good. Last statement. Thank you very much, Tony. Thank you. Pleasure.